Hi everyone, this is Lux Dose, and today I'm bringing you a weak auras video guide. We're gonna learn on how to track Azerite trade. Most of them are going to be buff or debuff, so those are pretty easy to track, and I'm gonna show you how. First, you need to install the add-on called Weak Auras, of course, so I currently have the version, the latest version, called 2.7.7. Make sure you install that. And we're going to need also an add-on called ID tip, which is going to be very helpful to, uh, to know what's the ID of spells and ID of item also. So that's going to be helpful. Make sure you install both of those at the latest uh, released version. We're going to get right into it. So let me delete that and start over. We're going to create a new group. We're going to create a new dynamic group. And we're going to call it Azerite Traits, right? Pretty straightforward. We're going to create uh, a new aura for our first Azerite trait. As a Dead Knight, I have a trait called Festering Doom, which I might want to track. It's currently not one of the best traits for Unholy, but it's something that is worth tracking if it ever gets buffed or if you're, if you're still just using it it, it, it could have some use in getting tracked. So currently Festering Doom, every time you Dead Coil, your next Festering Strike is going to do increased additional damage. It stacks, but only stacks three times. So that's useful information, right? Because I don't want to dead coil more than three times before using Festering Strike. Otherwise, I'm losing potential damage. It's not a lot, but it's still increased damage, right? So let's get started on how to track that. So we're we're gonna create we're gonna create a new uh, a new icon. We're gonna call it Festering Doom. Okay. There you go. We're going to load it only for Death Knight, right? Because this is a particular Death Knight trait. And this one is only available for Anoli. Let's go figure out what the ID of Festering Doom is. So if I enter a combat on, on a dummy and I do a Death Coil, I'll be able to see that the spell ID is 272741 because of my add-on. Let's go in here. In aura trigger one 27 27 41 there you go so what I did is I went into the trigger tab on the aura we just created I went into trigger one I did an aura put in the ID we need to make sure it is a player buff right because it's it's on the, on our character and we're gonna do let's do let's start with buffed right we're gonna leave it at that we're gonna make sure in display we're at cooldown and we're showing stacks so as soon as I go into combat and I get a death coil off, there you go. We're going to get Festering Doom showing up, how much how much time there is left, and we're going to see the stacks on it. Okay, so that's pretty useful. That's pretty useful information. But let's say I want to have it show all the time. So we're going to go do always right there. And maybe if it is not available, so if it is not buffed, so buffed, false right so i went into conditions i added a condition and i selected the trigger one which is my tracking for the, the buff on myself i want to check when it is not buffed desaturated right so when it is not buff it's going to desaturate and as soon as it applies it's going to light up it's going to saturate Let's also do add another condition uh, stacks, let's say, and when it e is equal at three, so the maximum amount of stacks, we're going to make it glow. OK, we're simply going to check it and now it's going to glow. So we're going to go ahead and build some resources. So one, two and three. There you go. So now it's going to glow, letting me know I have three stacks. So it cannot stack up any more than that. And let me show you. So if I hit it one more time, it's simply going to refresh. It is still at three. It cannot go higher than that. Then I can use it with Festering Strike. Boom. It consumes the damage and disappear, Or at least removes the glow, removes the color, removes the stack. So that's pretty, that's pretty useful, right? So... Right now, that's pretty big. Uh, let's move it in in the Azerite trait group right there, and let's uh, let's dim it down to like 50, maybe. So make sure you press the number and enter for the value to change. Let's track something else. 
We could track fa filthy transfusion, right? So festering doom, duplicate. We're gonna call this one filthy transfusion. Okay. Trigger. Filthy transfusion is is actually a debuff, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click target and it debuff, and we're gonna bash this dummy until it procs because we need to find out what the ID is. There is also a simpler solution. You can go and wow it, type it out, search for it, and you'll get the spell ID in the URL. It's going to say spell equal a number. That's going to be the spell ID. But sometimes it's confusing because you get you get it from somewhere else, right? 27, 38, 36. 27, 38, 36. You type it somewhere in notepad, anywhere, doesn't matter, right? Just to remember it, open back week quorum. You have to be out of combat, paste the ID in, filthy transfusion, there you go, target debuff. It's going to act the exact same way. We don't care about stacks because it cannot stacks. We're going to go to display, type space in here at the text, in the text setting number one. So right at the top, type space. So you're not going to have any number at the bottom. And now we're tracking filthy transfusion. Since it's a buff, uh, a debuff on the target, what I recommend that you do is that you check show if unit is invalid and own only own only is uh, if someone else in your group has a proc on the target you don't want to see it you just want to see it for yourself and show if unit is invalid you will not have to click a target for it to appear because otherwise it's going to make your your group move out like that so every time you click it's going to show up that's a little bit annoying especially if you're switching target and everything so make sure you check that up and in the group let's do uh let's have it row left right or something like that let's put it right there and now if i go in combat i can start tracking my azerite trait so tracking this i'm trying i'm tracking the filthy transfusion also so that's pretty cool right that's pretty cool but now what happened if i change my shoulder i get the shoulder right well festering doom is still getting tracked and that's an issue because I don't have it anymore. So this is useless information. This is clustering up my interface. And I don't want that. So let's go ahead and fix that for you. Right? We're going to click on Festering Doom. We're going to go into Trigger. And we're going to add a new one. We're going to add a status. And we're going to add a status for item equipped. Right? We're going to go in here. Find out what the number... What is the ID for Festering Doom. Uh, so I add... Well, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Right? So the ID for those shoulder are is uh, 15, 9, 4, 3, 1. Enter. There you go. Kraken shell pauldrons. Okay. So right now, what this does is the required for activation is making sure that all of the trigger, so trigger 1 and 2, are active. Okay. But for example, just like you saw, I have two shoulders that have festering doom. So if, for example, I want to track both of those because maybe one might have a good uh, ring number two traits for AoE and the other one might have a good traits for single target. So I want both of those shoulder to show up festering doom in my group, right? What we're going to do is we're going to add a, a, a third trigger status item. So item equipped. We're going to enter the ID of those also. So 15, 9, Four, three, nine. Enter. There you go. Binders pauldron. The issue that we have right now is you cannot have both of those equipped at the same time. So you cannot have all triggers, right? All triggers doesn't work. What you can do is uh, you cannot do any trigger, right? Because this one is always going to return uh, true. It's always true because it's you, sh you said show on always, right? So what we do is we do a custom function. We're going to do a custom trigger. So this is a little more advanced, but it's pretty simple to do. So what we do is we do a function, and in, in the parentheses, we pass uh, the value T, which is going to contain all of your triggers. Then what we do is we ask the function. So at the end, we, we type end because it's it's function. It starts with the, with the call function, and it ends. It, it close up with the word end. So these are going to be in the in the comments below, in the description below, I mean. So don't worry about uh, having to, to type them out. But if you want to follow along, you can pause at any time and, and, uh, and type those in yourself. We're going to return the value T2. 
So shoulder number one or T3, okay? So if trigger two or trigger three returns true, then we're going to activate. Click done. So if you remember, uh, shoulder two are here, shoulder, uh, well, shoulder one are in the trigger two. And you can also move those up it's, if, if that's too confusing, right? So if you want to have your this be number three, it doesn't matter. And then you can do that. The shoulder one is one, shoulder two is two. So then it, it makes the logic maybe a little simpler, right? It doesn't really matter, okay? So now what's going to happen is, uh, of course, you need to show the right information. Because as you see right now, it's showing the shoulder pad in the aura. So you come back here. Dynamic information is what pass along the information for your um, for this icon, right? So normally it goes for the first active trigger. This is why having uh, this as the number one was showing this as the icon, okay? So you can simply say dynamic information. So icon, cooldown, everything. I want it to be pulled from trigger, uh, trigger three which is this one right here. So then you can add as many shoulder pads as you want. You can do one or two or three, or it doesn't have to be shoulder pads, actually. It could be chess, elm, any item, any Azerite item that has this trait in. You can add the ID as a new trigger and simply do T1 or T2, three, four, five, and keep going on for as many item as you currently have that has this trait, okay? So this is pretty simple to do, and then it's going to load accordingly. So if I change my shoulder to these one, it's not showing up anymore. But if I switch between any of those two, it still shows up because both of those has, have the Festering Doom trait. But if I go on this one, it's not going to show up. So you can go ahead and implement that for any of your traits. Buff, debuff, it doesn't matter. Both of those were covered in this guide. It's pretty simple and straightforward to do. Make sure you play out with the loading condition so if you want it to only load in combat specific class specific talent a specific level specific id for zone so if you only want those to load in raid or an arena or in it's very straightforward just read the label click it see what it does and you're going to be able to learn pretty quickly how to configure those so you can have all of your azerite trait load in here but only the ones that are equipped are going to show up. So it's gonna it's going to be dynamic. You're not gonna need to play with them when you're raiding or anything. It's all gonna be configured in advance, ready for you to go and hit uh, your 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 content. Right? You can also change your rotation with those. So if you want, instead of having a different icon apply here, you can go, for example, on any of your spell. And you can add multiple triggers. But this is going to be in an advanced guide. If you want to start playing with those, you can do so. But I'm going to make a separate guide on how to customize the rotation. So, for example, I currently have Festering Wound. If I wanted to, I could simply click here and add the trigger for the Festering Doom in here. And then have it glow if it's present, right? So... You can see that it's this, this is very easy to set up. You just have to play with it. If you do any mistake, you can load it back again. Don't worry. But what I recommend doing for starters is have a separate group. Lo uh, load those in there or put them in the specific utilities wherever you want. Play with them. Have some fun with it and make sure you try things out. If, you, if you're able to do something cool, make sure you share it so other people might want to use uh, your stuff, right? So... Make sure you do that. So if you like this video, if it was helpful to you, make sure you leave a like. You can leave a comment down below. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can come watch me on Twitch. You can come just send a follow, say hi. I always like that. We're doing these videos live on Twitch. So it's always fun when you guys come in here and hang out with me. I greatly appreciate it. So this is it for me today, guys. Make sure you leave a comment below if you have any question about Weekor's add-on, guides, a specific class, anything. I'll make sure to try and answer it with the best of my knowledge. This is it for me today. That was Luxdose, and I'll wish you good luck in BFA.